Premier Praise. Light up your life. This is Premier Praise, and to help me launch this new station, we welcome Grammy Award winning Christian singer songwriter Matt Redman. Thank you for coming along. Hello, it's a joy. Yeah, and thank you for supporting Premier Praise as well. Yeah, this is fantastic. You know, worship music has an amazing ability to carry truth and hope or peace or whatever it is in someone's life. And so I think this new station is going to really impact people's lives in a wonderful way. We hope so. And it's great to have you on board as well. Of course, as I mentioned, you are a Grammy Award winner. What do you think about how Christian music is represented in big award ceremonies at the moment? It's interesting. Yeah, I've been to the Grammys a few times and it's funny. You have this whole section which is Christian and gospel music and there's several awards and... um, I kind of love that, you know. I love uh, when the time when I won. I had, obviously had to get up on the stage and say a few things, and I, I quoted this uh, old uh, the composer Bach, who talked about you know, music for the glory of God and the refreshment of the soul, and it got this big clap. And I said, wow. "It's bizarre, you know, I, 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 that people would resonate with that." And and I guess uh, yeah, it's nice to see that happen. You know, I, I like. It's not great to put everything in compartments all the time. This is Christian. This is not Christian. You know, I think God shows up in in so many ways, yeah. in so many different environments. And, and so it's really good. And when you started your music career, did you ever imagine that you'd be on that stage at the Grammys? No, I mean, obviously not at all. I didn't. I can't read music. I kind of got into this through just because I loved worship music. I loved these songs that I was hearing at church. In fact, they kind of showed up at a really important time in my life. I was seven years old. I just lost my dad who had taken his own life. My mum took me along to this worship meeting and I just was enthralled by this music. It went, I I can't uh, say what I thought at the time because I don't think I had the words for it, but now I'd say it's like the people of God in the presence of God pouring out the praise of God. I was so caught up in it. And so I got into that, this because of that, you know, I didn't have the career path mapped out or anything. So it is amazing to be on a stage in LA and receiving a couple of awards like that, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. And you mentioned, you know, not perhaps having such uh, big dividing lines between Christian and non-Christian music. Is that something you'd hope for going forward? Well, I mean, I I have a real passion and probably a calling to write songs for the church to sing. So I'm always thinking about that. How can we journey together and worship when we're gathered like that? But I love it when the songs find them a little home outside of that. We had some stories come back... um, particularly a song like 10,000 Reasons, some of the stories that come back, uh, a lot of them are from Christians, but I've had people, a uh, really well-known rock band, this guy who's their road manager, saying, I was at my dad's funeral, I'm not a Christian, and they sung this song, and I just can't get it out of my head, and you know, just want to let you know how much it's impacted me. I've had uh, another couple who weren't Christians who said that this song saved our marriage. We had a lot of disharmony in our marriage, and a lot of crazy tension in the house and we would put this we they found this song on christian radio in america figured out what it was and they would play this song and this guy said to me it's no exaggeration to say this song has helped save our family so it's those little moments you're writing a song for the people of god to sing in church i love it when they kind of find a little home outside of the 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 walls of the church too it's really special yeah and did you know that 10,000 Reasons is the most popular song on Premier Christian Radio they had told me that and that's really Um. amazing I mean it's funny because when we wrote this song I didn't think it was finished it doesn't have a pre-chorus or a bridge like often songs do and we had like 25 songs we were going to record 11 of them I don't think it would have made my 11 really it shows how much I know about this stuff (laughs) but my team you know they said hey this song's going on and it's been amazing it's a simple little song you know but it's been amazing seeing the way it's shown up in people's lives and um, hopefully brought some hope to them but also some glory to god premier praise light up your life why is praise music so important to you for me personally praise music is so important because it came along in my life at a really important time i, I had a really rocky childhood and my teenage years there was some pretty bad stuff going on in our family uh someone went to jail for some of that and i and i i didn't have an easy teenage time it was very turbulent one of the main things that kept my life stable at that moment was worship music it was my little hideaway it was my way of keeping sane when the whole world was going crazy around me and you know i think it's like that sometimes you know the throne of god it's not only a place of reverence but it's a place of refuge and worship music can take you there it can take you to the place that's the thing, isn't it? 
life can be so unstable, so fallible and failing and, you know, fading. You know, there's not many things you can put your trust in that are not going to change at some point. Um, sometimes the whole world appears to be breaking and shaking around you, but there is a place that will never change. It's the throne room of God, you know, and he's the same yesterday, today and forever. So that's always my advice to people. If you're in that shaky moment, go to that place. And that's what I did as a kid, as a teenager. And then I liked it so much, I thought I'm going to try and write some songs. I'm going to lead worship. So that's for me personally why worship music is so special, so important. It's because it it just gave me a, a place to encounter Christ when I really needed it. And that's what we hope, actually, that Premier Praise will be able to do for people, that they'll be able to tune in and dip in and, and get that in an instant. And that's why radio is so great. Absolutely. So immediate as well. So many of these songs, it's just a great window onto the heart of God. Mm, oh, it's a lovely way to put it. Yeah, it is. It's a window and it's something that we can provide. And it's also for busy people because sometimes it can be difficult yeah. to get that window when you've got a million yeah. things to do, you're in a world, you're getting ready for work or you're looking after the kids or whatever. You've got five children. Yes, I do. And a busy career. How do yeah. you juggle it all? Wow, my wife is probably the main answer. To that. <laughs> Beth is pretty amazing. She's just, uh, th- there's never a boring moment. If one of my kids comes and says, uh, we're, I'm bored, Dad. I'm like, you can't be. There's seven <laughs> of us in this house. It's actually impossible. You know, and, but but you just make a plan. I'm no expert. You know, I think being a parent is is a gradual learning curve and I'm learning all the way, always trying to get wisdom from those older than me who've been through stuff. And um, But I love being a parent. I love it. And, and you know, I don't mind being busy because it's, it's fantastic. But I am really aware with the music stuff, especially with five kids that, you know, it's really important that your input, you know, what you're listening to, you know, music can play a big part in people's lives. If it's in the car or on the radio or TV or internet, wherever it is, you know, I'm so, I'm always looking at my kids. What are they listening to? Cause I know that your input is going to affect your life. You know, yeah. what you're listening to, the kind of themes you're listening to, it's going to really make a big impact on who you are as a person, maybe on your character, maybe on your choices. So this this new radio station is is really it's not just music. This is really going to change people's lives. Mm, yeah, I suppose it's nourishing, isn't it? And it's Absolutely. the kind of nourishment you get from the input that you have. Yeah. In the same way as people say, you are what you eat, you yes. are what you consume. Ah, uh, so <laughs> true. And I think sometimes people don't even realise. That's the joy of some of these songs, is that people think, oh, I'm just listening to this song. I love this song. It's cool. But actually, it's teaching you something about who Jesus is, or it's reminding you something about the heart of God, or maybe it's injecting some hope or peace or joy into your moment. And sometimes I found with worship songs that sometimes people get into their most intense moments in life. And then that's what happens. They're like, oh, yeah, this song, you know, that song I heard on Premier Praise, I, bring it back to me right now. I need to remember those words right now. Yeah, and, and hopefully that will kind of carry them through and get them into a new phase of life. I think it really can be quite quite life-changing, actually, Absolutely. the music. Um, we'd like, actually, if you could, if you had a moment, to, to share a, a prayer with us here at yeah. Premier Praise. Obviously, today is the first day yes. we hope is going to be a, a new station that's really going to bring a lot of joy to people. Yeah. Father, thank you so much for this new station. Um, I thank you it was your idea and I thank you that you're going to use this station and these songs to impact so many lives. I thank you that you say that when we draw near to you, you're going to draw near to us. And I pray that as people listen to this new Premier Praise station, they would draw near to you and they would sense that you are drawing near to them. That sounds to me like the best exchange that could ever happen. Little old us drawing near to Almighty God and finding ourselves in your presence. I pray that even today, as people listen on this first day, they know something of your beautiful, powerful, um, life-giving presence. Amen to that. Amen. Um, And what? Amen. (laughs) I say amen too much because I'm in America. You see. Oh. And what should it be? Well, it should be amen, right? Mm, Well, I don't know. I hear both. So, as a songwriter, amen sounds so much better. It's quite impactful, Amen isn't it? With the... sing good. <laughs> so it depends what you're, you're rhyming yeah. it with. If it was ramen, the food, you'd be all right, but yeah, otherwise not. You're probably right. <laughs> and it's really great, as I say, that you're with us on the first day of this brand new radio station. If I had to ask you, what would you want this station to achieve going forward? How would you like it to, to be impactful? You know, I think um, worship music, if we're not careful, just happens kind of once a week in our lives. You know, it is a great way of travelling together as a community isn't it we all get together in a church building and we sing our hearts out and we're something very unifying about getting on that same page together that same hymn sheet if you like and hmm. but what i love about a station like this is it can take people to that moment uh 
you know, several times during their week, or maybe you're going to listen every day. I don't know. Premier Praise, light up your life. And we will be playing, obviously, 10,000 Reasons lots of times on the station. Do you ever get bored of being asked to play it yourself? Because it's so popular. Um, I don't get bored of it, actually, because partly because it's the whole thing surprised me. I think I shared earlier, you know, it's a simple song, but it's had more momentum than anything I've ever been part of in like 20 years, you know, and, and some of the stories that come back are just so profound. You know, I've had... Uh, probably about 15 people now written with almost identical story. My loved one was going to pass away from uh, terminal illness and they requested that as they went to be with Jesus, the last song they'd be hearing or us singing over them maybe would be 10,000 Reasons. So when you get that kind of story back, there's another one which I've told a few times. Uh, there was this prisoners on death row in Bali and they were going to face the death penalty for drug trafficking offences that they committed about nine years previously. And uh, since then, they've become Christians, and their lives just radically transformed by Christ. And in fact, they were transforming the lives of others there in that prison. But the authorities decided they still needed to face their death penalty. And, and as they were, literally, as they were facing that firing squad, they were singing this song, 10,000 Reasons. And I heard back from someone who was actually present at that moment, just, you know, telling me how the song just gave them an amazing moment to showcase their hearts for Christ. And so when you get those kind of stories back, it's, you know, I don't think I could get bored of the song because it's just because of the way it's resounded with, with people. It's just been such a privilege to be part of. It is incredible how music can change people's lives yeah. in that sense. When you're creating the songs, how does that work for you? Do you feel that God is very much present in that creative process? Yeah. Um, it's a funny thing because songwriting in some ways is, is, can be really hard work. Then it can be, I mean, actually, you 2 the band U2, they describe songwriting, it's sometimes like a playground, sometimes like a boxing ring. And, of course, we all love it when it's like a playground. You're just loving it, you're meeting with God. You just There's other times where it's like you're contending for something, you're fighting for something, and and, and, it, and it can really be like that, you know, into the, I mean, even with 10,000 Reasons, I think that one was a playground. You know, 1.30 a.m. we started that, and a little chapel in England, uh, in, in, in the south of England where I live, and... It just came so quickly. One of the fastest songs I've ever been part of writing. Then a song like Blessed Be Your Name, which is probably one of the other ones for me that's flowed out the most. That was one of the hardest songs. It's like being in a 12-round boxing match, you know. And it, and it, like, I really believe in this theme. How am I going to say it? You know, I can't quite get my words and melodies around this. And again and again, version after version, I guess six months later, the song comes out. So, yeah. you know, I hope there's a sense of God every time. But I don't think the Holy Spirit minds a bit of hard work. You know, some I used to think when I started this that anything that went quickly and easy, oh, that must be the Holy Spirit's inspiration. But I think now, actually, he can inspire you to work hard too. He can help you stay in the game when you might have given up, you know, that kind of thing. Well, thank you for persevering because you bless so many people uh, with your songs. Premier Praise, light up your life. So what's next for you this year? Have you got big plans? Well, um... We're actually not going to travel too much next six months. Be good to be home, and and but actually we're going to work on a Christmas record, which is slightly un-English, right? A lot of these American yeah. uh, musicians and worship leaders have, have made Christmas records, but not too many from here. Rain Collective have done a fantastic one, actually. But we're going to work on this. I'm actually going to be songwriting in Israel, which would be great for that. Thought that'd be a really special place to write some of these songs. Fantastic. So I'll be working on that for a little while. Lovely. Well, when you've got time, you'll have to come back and see us again. Thank you so much for helping us to launch this brand new radio station, Premier Praise. I'd love to come back again, and I'm really excited about this. Uh, make sure you're a regular listener to, to Premier Praise. Premier Praise, light up your life.